This is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council Debriefings, where the storm has a name. Today, we are your hosts, Jay and myself, Lehman. Uh, Mark is not starting with us. He might come in. So if he does, we'll have a quick transition um, with him. Uh, but real life pops up sometimes, and we all understand that. <laughs> Um, so, we are going to do the second part of the Pan Pacifica backer perks, but before we do that, we have a couple of emails that were sent to us. Um, so, the first email says, Hi, fellas. I happened to listen to the most recent podcast today, literally three hours before running, um, and I will do some slight editing to... Uh, cancel out some possible spoilers, but I'll say little, literally three hours before running a chase. Um, and since we talked a lot about chases in the last two episodes, uh, that was uh, probably very convenient. It says, I can't thank you enough for all of the excellent, excellent ideas you discussed. Um, and then basically he goes on to how they, <laughs> his, his group uh, planted a bomb and, and how they added some other things to the chase that led to a very satisfying explosive finale. So that's pretty cool. You know, you're able to uh, bring in some other things to the chase to add to the drama and excitement. Um, I agree that chases are a risk of becoming quite samey unless planned and managed carefully. So I intend to try to encourage opportunities uh, participants to do things apart from trying to go fast attacks defenses interactions etc one of the house rules i'll try porting from my classic tour game is the concept of skill synergies e.g maneuvering in a vehicle use uses the lower of vehicle ads and maneuver ads taunting in foreign languages uses the lower of taunt ads and language ads etc the intention is to encourage more variety of actions and broaden the optimization range of narrowly focused characters. Thank you again. Keep up the amazing work. No exaggeration. The DCD podcast is one of the things I look forward to most every week. Best T. So T, thank you very much for uh, that email. We did discuss, as I said, chases about two episodes ago and then half a last episode. Um, so yeah, you might look into a classic Torg things and see if certain things port over. Um, the, the system's still based on a similar chart and everything. So I personally think it's pretty easy to convert things. And if there is rules that you enjoyed from the classic Torg that you think would add a little variety and spice to your chases, I'm all for that. Any Thoughts before we move on, Jay? Yeah, I mean, this idea of skill synergies in this way, I think the first time I encountered that was the Babylon Project RPG for Babylon 5. Because I remember the the medicine skill, if you were a doctor, you, you were limited by your ads of xenobiology if you're trying to do it on an alien. And I've always thought about that in future games. So I could see something like that could work in Torque. Although I do feel there is the chance that that might actually do the opposite because if you need to have language then they might just not do intimidation <laughs> unless they take language so you got to be careful it's a possible double-edged sword but as long as you can make it more interesting and the players are going to go along with it then it's great and the language skill itself has often been a touchy subject as yes. i believe we talked about previously <laughs> yes yes They're really different groups do it completely different you know, shortcuts, long cuts, you know, every single language exactly. you have to do, yeah. or just, hey, you have a language skill, you know, languages. So. Yeah. <laughs> and everything in between. So uh, we do thank you, T, for that email. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. Hi, all. I've been running Torg since the original in the 90s and loved everything you've done with Torg Eternity. Question, <clears throat> what suggestions do you have for Cosm creation? I've created some in the past and get stuck with world laws and axiom selection. When an axiom is needed to support a thing in the Cosm, but only that one thing and nothing else, i.e. temporary powers through drinkable bio and has 
enhancements a la Bioshock seem like a Tech 25 thing, but nothing else in the Bioshock Cosm is Tech 25. How do you get around that Axiom selection? Does it become part of the world laws? Thanks for the help. Kind regards, Matt K. Um, so, Jay, what are your thoughts on Cosm creation, Axioms versus world laws? How to inject that thing that you want in there that you don't want necessarily other things of that level? I mean, personally, I don't really worry about it too much, uh, but I haven't really created any that many Cosms from scratch. I kind of stick with the, the standard ones. But the thing is, as you mentioned, it could be a world law. But I think a lot of people forget that the axioms are what is possible, not what there is. <clears throat> so Tharkold has a very high social axiom, but they are really not able to make that much use of it because of their other world laws. So Bioshock, even though it's in a very kind of like Art Deco kind of older style, there's still a lot of crazy stuff going on there. You could easily say that it's Tech 25, uh, given some of the other things, even though the rest of the world isn't. Nine, unless you have like a group of total like munchkin cheese weasel, cheese weasel players, like they're probably not even going to care what the axioms are too much. So as long as you just come up with something and then you can say that it's due to a world law, but I believe Torg Eternity has tried to get away from that as much as possible. The closest thing is really being uh, Pan Pacifica's like half a tech axiom <laughs> bump right. uh, just for bio. But aside from that, they've tried to avoid it, but I guess it's the other way around, like with Tharkul. It's not the world laws are giving you this extra ability. If anything, they're holding you back. Kind of also like the cyber papacy. Um, I, I've heard scuttlebutt from some of the other developers that they they think that they should have kept the social even lower. Because mm -hmm. uh, originally the social was taken up to a certain level purely for the existence of corporations. But in the end, it all changed to guilds anyway. And there are no corporations, essentially. So it probably could have actually been much lower. Um, yeah, so I think just put the axioms where you think things work. And there's always the existence of outliers as well. Like there are places on Core Earth where the tech is higher and the magic is higher. So there might be some situations it just happens to work that way too. Yeah, I, I agree with all of those. You can work it as a... Uh, world law of it allows this exception like the pan pacifica bio uh, gene mod stuff or you could just say yeah the, the tech is 25 but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's used if you have a high lord or mm -hmm. somebody in that power position keeping things down not transforming things um, even in in classic uh, torg the uh the, the original cosm source for a cyber papacy uh depending on if you're using classical or medieval Latin uh, magna uh. <laughs> verita or magna verita. Um, the cyber pope did not allow that to the transformation to happen on the world. So any anything on that original world was still the uh, pre-tech way that it went down. Um, it was only in the realm in you know of the staked out stales of core earth that the cybernetics and everything came in it was able if somebody moved it across the maelstrom bridge it was able to be used but it wasn't there so your high lord and your darkness device you have a lot of manipulation there of what they allow what they don't allow things getting in and that could an underground system of people moving these uh, drinkable and bio enhancements. I mean, you could have a few adventures just on that of setting up a black market and you know moving stuff around. So yeah, and I think um, I'm not 100 percent who I was talking about this with before, but if memory serves, in Orosh, the Victorians' uh, weapons are actually like not counting Slayer guns, which are you know crazy Van Helsing guns, right. <laughs> but but like their regular armaments are actually a little bit lower than what their tech level mm -hmm. would allow for. So when they came to Core Earth and suddenly they've found guns that already exist that they can use that are better <laughs> than their current right. guns. It's like, well, hey, there we go. So there there's 
but even still the odd like inn or like village there'll still be people with like you know cap and ball you know guns uh, and stuff as well yeah you know when you're shooting muskets and the guy next to you can use a lever action rifle <laughs> yeah 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 like oh they, okay. they, both, they both they both work so yeah do what you need to do so that, that's one of the, those things um and then i was also going to say that Jay does have um, Infiniverse Exchange products for different Cosms that are not necessarily uh, the the base <laughs> official ones. Um, so you can not check official. out you can check those out for ideas. Um, I want to say I did a in, in my uh, Paraverse. I have the the thing that happened in my group was they. They unwittingly allowed the Aztec Empire to come up <laughs> and, and be a thing. Right. And so I made some Cosm cards for that. So there's, you know, if you want to make Cosm cards and figure out how those Cosm possibilities, you can go really into it. Or you could just say, oh, this is just a pocket Cosm, a mini Cosm that doesn't have all these things fleshed out. And so you can go as, as deep into it as you want or just have it as a little sidetrack flavor type thing that doesn't really get into it i think you also did a caution cosm cards didn't yeah you? i actually went so far as i did a caution cards and ukon cards, cards and maritika cards and i was probably gonna start doing some godnet cards i just never got around to it uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah totally unnecessary right especially for a acacia because it's like should that even still have anything but <laughs> i just thought it was nice and flavorful personally <laughs> yeah, so go, go as deep into that, or like I said, you can you know lay off if that's basically it's your cosm. You can get as deep yeah. into it and have some real good fun with it anyway. So hopefully that helped uh, with the how to do tech or any axioms you could do with magic or psionics and social as well. Um, so thank you very much, Matt K, for that. And for any of the viewers or listeners, uh, you can email us and we'll read off the emails, answer any of your questions at torgdcd at gmail.com. And then let's go ahead and move into the uh, Pan Pacifica Backer Perks Part 2. Um, so our next perk in line is from the archetype Champion of Hope. And the new perk is called There's Always Hope. The prerequisites are being from Core Earth and three ads in reality. And this perk is when you receive a Cosm card from a Cosm other than Core Earth through any means, you may choose it at any time to make a reality test to attempt to convert it to Core Earth Cosm card. On a success, the Cosm card changes to a Core Earth Cosm card. You discard the original one and you randomly choose, or you get dealt to you, I guess, randomly, the Core Earth Cosm card. And But if there is a play immediately language on the Cosm card, you need a good success to change it. So if you're in Cyber Papacy and you pull out one that's immediately needs to be played, then you're going to need a good success to to change it as you're trying to warp reality really quick instead of over time. And this can be attempted only once per card. Um, before I uh, hand it over to you, Jay, for your opinion, I do want to say that this changed a little bit. I think the original um, version was just you automatically convert it to a core earth. Um, but there are cards that you could get that you might like and always being forced to do a core earth cosm card isn't necessarily always fun and i think there was similar things that required a reality test so that's why that was brought in and then the play immediately i just thought would be a or me the backer and i both we had a lot of back and forth uh, we came to the agreement that having it need a higher success uh to to change it made sense so what are your thoughts on the there is always hope this is a very good perk uh if you're making a reality based core earth character you probably should just take this it's kind of in that um you know um 
that level. <laughs> it's the, the, the no brainer uh, not, level. <laughs> the no brainer level because not only is it get a core Earth card, it's also a redraw a bad cosm card just in general. So, I mean, you might be an Isle and you might want some of the Isle cards because some of them are pretty good, give you just magic items, right. but some of them are pretty bad. So trap. trap gets revealed, you know, and you're like, okay, now I'll do it because it gives you the agency, which is the the really important thing. If it was automatic, it would be way worse. Um, making the reality test is not a big deal because you're probably going to have a high reality, probably male strumming people, like all that stuff. But uh, the most important thing I think is that it's limited to once per card. So mm -hmm. if if you had tuned uh, the the destiny card attuned to let you draw another cosm card. You could do it again, and you could do this multiple times per act if there's other ways of drawing Cosm cards. Uh, this does mean you do have to really think about if you want to use those Ukan and uh, Acacia cards then, because that might just be funneling uh, cards, Core Earth cards. And almost every Core Earth card is really good. Some right. of them might not apply exactly, but most of them are really good. So that's sort of like the big bonus for Core Earth. So yeah, this, th this is like... This should just be in the reality section of the 1.5 book. Like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I, like I said, I was really happy. Um, and it, it's, it was a fun experience to work with the backers to start off with the concept and then, you know, adjust it to fit right. I want to say there's probably another perk out there that does something similar. And that's kind of where I was looking at various perks because you also, while everything can't perfectly balance, you do kind of on a lot of occasions, you don't want to have something that does exactly the same as a previous perk, but better. So being able to adjust it a little bit, but this one was r really fun with the, uh, the, the backer doing this. Uh, they, they all were, but this was one that I just remember there being a bit of back and forth on. Um, so the next one is called the uh, Rule of Cool, which is from the Aloof Sniper. And it is you can attempt seemingly impossible shots using just your coolness factor. You substitute charisma for dexterity when using m missile weapons, fire combat, or energy weapons. You choose one, so you pick the perk, you choose which it applies to. And then when using the chosen attack method once per scene, you may spend a possibility to replace dexterity with charisma for your dodge defense in that combat. So there's kind of a, a two-parter. One is you're substituting charisma for one of those three skills, missile weapons, fire combat, or energy weapons. And then the second part of it is um, when you're using that method, you can replace charisma for dodge a once per per scene, which a lot of scenes do only have one combat, but not. So uh, thoughts on that? I don't know how I feel about this one, to be honest, because I know a lot of people try to rehabilitate charisma, <laughs> you know, like, uh, to try to make it more useful. But this seems to be kind of like overdoing it uh, or like just being a bit too in your face about it. Um, I don't know if it would really be that worth it to take normally because dexter like getting to use your career if you have a high charisma which i'm assuming you do for this then getting to use your charisma for one of your weapons is is fine but usually you do need your your dexterity for other things like the mm -hmm. defense uh and spending a possibility is not nothing mm -hmm. but it is noting that that only affects your dodge Right. It does not, not affect yeah. unarmed, right? So I kind of worry that this can get you into trouble, maybe, <laughs> that you're <laughs> not really necessarily ready for. But, um, yeah, I guess it, it seems almost like one of those artificial, this is my build kind of perks, uh, <laughs> more than like just a cool role play perk. I mean, it's, I think it works, but uh, you have to watch out that it could backfire on you. And it just seems a little too, I guess, artificial for me. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. Um, th this, I think I might have mentioned it last time, the Pan Pacifica backers, 
uh, we communicated and, and like not all together. So it was like me talking to one backer back and forth to the other backer right. separately. And half of them were wanting to do something with charisma because charisma <laughs> hadn't been. I, I think uh, on on one of the the unofficial forums, somebody had did a big sheet of what every uh, backer right, archive and, and official that. was, and how you know the charisma was the dump stat on ninety nine point nine percent of them. And I think at this point, a lot of backers were like, "We want to break that," <laughs> so they all broke it at one time. Right. And but yeah, the, the the concept of this was a a sniper kind of staying in the back. Then it would work out if uh, you get ambushed or something and get taken into close combat, as you said. Then the the double edged sword aspect can, right. can come in, and you're no longer uh, optimized for that. So I I kind of like it the the coolness. You know, you just do things based off of your charisma. It can al- allow for certain type of role playing. Um, again, depending on how serious or uh, whimsical you want your Storm Knights or your group to be, that's going to be an individual table um, decision. So that's one of the things that I would say with this one is this could lead into uh, more comical type things that you might not want at your table. But if you do like that stuff, then bring this one in. Um, the next one, this one might take a little while to to wrap ourselves <laughs> around. Um, right. This is from the Computer Assisted Speedster. And even though this is called the Computer Assisted Speedster and the new perk is called a virtual follower, it's not tech-based. Um, this was one that started off as like IA follower and it had a, a few names before we settled on virtual fo- follower. Um, but it, it's, uh, it's a a prereq which needs a non-contradictory perk granted item or vehicle that can house the follower's personality. So this is sort of a follower. It's a virtual follower. It's um, a prowess perk too, right? Yes, it's a prowess perk. Um, you have an incorporeal ally from your same cosm built as a follower with no strength or toughness. So you don't have to worry about uh, strength or toughness. 28 points distributed in the other attributes. You get 10 adds and skills. It can socialize pilot vehicles, use utility powers, but it has no mechanical effects on foes in combat and is not affected by foes except through interaction attacks. Actions you and the ally take in combat are resolved using the total from a single shared die, for bonus generation adjusted as a multi-action penalty rather than rolling separately. This perk may be selected more than once, each time giving the virtual follower either 5 XP to advance skills or gain a non-contradictory perk. Um, again, a few things I want to bring up before I uh, get your thoughts on this, Jay, is uh, the first one is the reason of this perk was a lot of people did not like different aspects of the normal followers or companions that it kind of adds another character and then that character can kind of take over or be almost as important as a storm knight um so so this one here was to lessen the amount of dice that you have to roll worrying about toughness um also we are limited on these by space <laughs> it's a front and a front page and a back sp- page that requires things um this could have been easily a lot of little caveats and little rules put in there. Um, I want to say at one time it was probably a full page of stuff that we try to condense. Um, but a few things is the first is it's from your same cosm. So you can't right there. You can't have something. You can't be cyber papal and have um, say an, an aisle follower, virtual follower. Um, the, the second thing is that it cannot affect, it doesn't have mechanical combat abilities. So if you put it in your car, your car can't have guns that it shoots. So it cannot affect things via damage. But could it ram someone? 
Um, I would say <laughs> <laughs> if 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 you're driving it, yes. If not, it has some, you know, as of second third you know the three laws or something in it that okay uh, would prevent it from you know hurting <laughs> intimidating by doing it sure let's you know go f- go for that um so w- with those Does things it, uh, well i'll let you finish <laughs> so so well i'm gonna hand it right over to you with those kind of clarifications because those had been asked uh, recently in to organize uh play Thoughts and then questions, because if people are looking at this, they might have questions. <laughs> I bet they do. Okay, well, the first thing I'll say is that my first year of university, I was playing GURPS with some people, and they were all manipulating. One guy had used the system in such a way to make his character a magic sword mm-hmm. that would then like possess people and make them into followers. So I've seen, so I, since then I have had an aversion to any kind of like pool follower, like incorporeal follower thing like Mm this. Uh, It always, like, it's almost always a recipe for trouble in my experience. Like it's someone's always trying to get something over on you, but let's just say we're going into this fair and square. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So this could be an AI. It could be a demon, something like that. Uh, I assume that if you transform, this will transform as well, yeah. right? It, got to stay. Okay. it has to uh, remain your own cosm, your own reality. Okay. So um, it can drive, it could do all this stuff, but it says that it can have no mechanical effect on foes in combat. Does that mean it can't do interaction attacks or it could? Because um, it I says think... it can only be affected by interaction attacks. But yeah, with no mechanical effects. So yes, it it um, would not be able to give things that would either bonus or negatives. It's kind of your right. So as uh, one of the things that was, I guess one of the purposes was to have anything from Kit from Night right. Rider to Obi Wan, and you know Kit can drive around and do stuff, but it's not killing people and obi-wan right. doesn't shoot the <clears throat> torpedo you know photon torpedo thing down the hatch for luke he just tells luke to use the force so it could be doing but things i guess i was is like does vulnerable and stymied count as a mechanical interaction i guess i would say yes because it's it's a, it's yeah so it mechanics. can't really it can't really do, do anything to a foe that way. Okay, so that was the big thing. Now, so I really, would say that it would, it it be... could, I would say it could help you. It could do a combined action with you. It could do a combined action? Okay. Type thing, count uh, as an extra. That Because that leads to what I was really wondering. Like, what is it good for then? <laughs> like, can it can drive? So if it's in a vehicle, it can drive. Right. Um, but what else could it do? do like so is this just a way to, for you to avoid taking ads in land vehicles because even if you are if it's driving it it's still a multi-action for you right It'd be much better just to have uh like the the cybernetic to connect if that's possible you know obviously you won't have this that as an issue <laughs> uh if you're not but um yeah i guess like what what kind of things do you see it actually doing as this virtual assistant i could also see it um working as a say a, a intelligent spell book that would be able to or, or knowledge tome that right you know, like so give it science or science. sky yeah you know uh, one of those type uh, a uh, college biology book that gives you some boost to, you know it knows first aid <laughs> or medicine you know, right because so, it like could be that. in in this in this archetype it's in the armor right so right uh would you let it do other physical things like lock picking? You know, like does it have a uh, like little digits you know, that come out or anything like that? I would say See, there's a lot of things you got to really square away. <laughs> right, right. And this would be something that I would hope the uh, player and game master would talk over, saying, "Hey, I would like this cool glove that you know has lock picking and it, um, or you know, it has this follower that can tell me where." I'm being watched so I can get better, you know, stealth or things like that. Cause those aren't, aren't necessarily uh, combat. And yeah, you can, you could put it's uh, 10 ads 
where you want and boost those. But if you're trying to do, if you're only doing that, if it's the only thing doing it, so it's doing its scholar and you're not doing anything, you roll, you won't have the multi-action. But if you're doing anything else, then you have the multi-action. So that's the, that's the downside of it getting, you know, the, the 10 ads is you're lessened a little bit, but then you get to, you know, if, if you want it to help you, so, you know, it has driving and you have driving, so you're a really yeah. good driver, go for it. If you want to split up your thing, so, you know, I'm good in this, this, and this, and it's good in these other things, um, it could help fill out a party that um, doesn't have skills that might be needed. Um, one thing that was brought up that I would not allow is somebody saying, hey, let's put everything into persuasion and have it do our requisitions. <laughs> Because right. it's not a storm night. It's not part of the Delphi Council. It would not be able to get requisitions that way. Um, on the street, streetwise, persuasion there. But it could aid maybe, you, right? But it might, <laughs> it might tell you what to say. Hey, this guy has this thing. So, you know, you could, it could aid you, yes. But I wouldn't see it as... It's the, I wouldn't allow this to be the face. I would allow right. this to help the face. I guess... I bet you anything someone would then argue that as long as I'm in my power armor with my visor shut down. and it's talking, <laughs> okay. they don't know it's not me. <laughs> right? uh, but yeah, so I think the talking about it a bit, uh, the way to really look at this is it's more an assistant, like it says, or like a familiar, a different way of having a familiar maybe, or right. even a, like a spirit uh, of Lanala or something that could speak to you as long as you're holding a certain bone, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, so think of it more as skills and basically not combat in any way, shape or form. Right. It's just in my experience, lots of players are going to try <laughs> to get it involved in combat. So right. just, I get, like you said, we, you have to be very firm with how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. And, and take the, you know, am I going to, is that negative two going to offset to it? In, yeah. in, in the, in a negative way, it's trying to boost me, but now we have the negative two. So if you only boost right. me by one, we still have a negative one. Why did I do this? <laughs> And realistically speaking, how often would you take this perk a second time just right. to give it five XP? <laughs> I mean, it's like, that seems rough. But that that's like a, a larger conversation uh -huh. for, for things like some of those path perks to right. take a second one or mastery where one of you takes something and don't get anything. It's always kind of like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> or the companion and other follower perk that you yeah. choose it again and you get a few <clears throat> XP or additional perk, which then counts against your perk, so it keeps going. The cost of it keeps going exactly, up yeah, as as well. So um, I like it. I think it it the the reason I went for this um, was as the backer explained to me, it it fits a role that is in a yeah. lot of movies. I mean, it's got I Jarvis mean, named right there. Right. You know, it has, I think we gave a bunch of those type of names, Cortana, Cortana yeah. Obi-Wan, you know, Jarvis, it's just it, any, it's like a very Swiss army knife type of thing that you can use it for multiple aspects without having to create a separate perk for, for everything. So yeah, the, but it is one that it, could be a little hard to wrap your head around so as a player as a game master strongly urge you to get together and determine what's allowed and what's not allowed for this as well as it's it's a good idea to do that with any companion i would say mm -hmm. um our our wednesday streams that we are doing now one of them has a, a giant moth companion that's kind of based off of the dragon companion it you know goes through the evol right. evolution steps of obtaining the perks and there there is discussion of how the player and the game master sh should go through some discussion on you know i don't want you just having this thing do every you know do the stealth like you guys you know to help you out it's a big giant moth you know just to get right <laughs> you know it's it's not just another storm night it's a companion so you know figure out where where that lies with your your group um so yeah i i think it's a fun perk 
um, but it needs to be looked at and definitely not abused. And there's if, if you just read it quickly and don't dig into it, it will be abused. So Right. Uh, and then we will move on to the uh, the archetype of the Psychic Ninja. And it is a new perk, Psychic Knight, Knife, um, which is more of a, a psychic power, telepathy power, not right. necessarily a, a whole new perk. Um, so I, I will say on this one, for anybody listening, this would not take a whole perk. You would add this to a list. And it would be one of the ones that you take from the list. But it is an axiom of 24. Uh, skill is telepathy of 12. Casting time, one action. DN is challenging of 12. Range is self. Duration is three rounds. And it uh, the Psy focuses and forms mental energy into a single knife of her own design. The manifest weapon of pure psychic energy cuts through armor without difficulty. On a standard success, the Psychic Knife deals willpower with a Charisma as a, a plus two non-lethal damage. And the Charisma is because it's based off of t telepathy. Um, that attacks the target's willpower or mind and is unaffected by armor. The Knife uses melee weapons to hit, and if dropped, handed off, or disarmed, the power duration immediately ends. Um, so clear cut, you can't hand this to somebody else and have them use it. And the success levels, a good is a plus one bonus die, and an outstanding is uh, two bonus dice. So thoughts on the psychic knife? Uh, if I understand this correctly, this is insanely good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the question is, like, um, what uh, powers lists would it appear on? That would be the game master. Determine. Yeah, so who would be able to even take this is the real question. Um, but, okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, so telepathy generally does not really have much in the way of any direct damaging attacks aside from some shock, I believe. Right. Right? All right, so this allows you to do charisma plus willpower plus two damage. Is that right? right? Or is it charisma it's, plus two? It's uh, the willpower using charisma as the stat. So instead of willpower mind or willpower um, spirit, right. you would use willpower charisma. As so it's charisma plus, plus willpower. Yes. Plus, plus two. two so, but it's non-lethal. But damage. it's non-lethal. But yes. non-lethal is almost irrelevant <laughs> for most, <laughs> most Storm Knights. They don't care what happens after the battle. Right. Um, except one core earth merc in one of my games went around chainsawing everybody afterwards, but that's a whole other story. Uh, the most important thing is that this will not work on, on dead robots. Like any, there's a lot of things that are immune to non-lethal damage, but to anyone else, that is a lot of damage. Cause I'm again, this is an assumption, but if you're taking this, you're probably going to have a pretty pumped up telepathy. So whatever your telepathy skill is plus two is probably going to be a lot. And the fact that it ignores armor, it's going to be a, a lot of damage and non-lethal damage. Unlike dazing, uh, non-lethal does normal damage. It just means that it can't kill someone. So if there's a defeat test, they're just knocked out. And I believe it heals quicker as well, it, but it, it still heal. takes people. It still takes people out of the battle just as quickly. Um, so yeah, the only real problem with this is the three round duration, which as we discussed before, depending on how, you know, particular you are with following the rules might mean you only get two attacks with it. Right. But probably you're going to, you're going to get three, but it's possible you might only get two. Um, and if you get high enough to get those extra bonus dice, because it is a, stock difficulty it's not compared against enemies so you could kind of plan for it a bit it is worth it to pump this so you can yes. get the extra plus two bonus dice you'll probably be able to take out most things that can't soak it like almost immediately i would say so this is very 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 good um i guess it doesn't specify does it uh i assume it's just the same range as normal throwing knives Oh, right, this one's range self. <laughs> right. Well, um, it, it wouldn't be able to be used to be thrown. As soon as it would leave your hand, it would 
Okay, so it's just for stabbing. It, yeah, it's a stabbing. Okay, so do you need to? It uses melee to hit. That's correct. Okay, so you can't yes. throw it. So I mean, that make, that that does make it a bit less crazy, uh, but still very good. <laughs> I want to say um, um, th this is a a, and I wish I knew what uh, the other power was. There is another power or spell or miracle that this is kind of an adjustment on. Which, mm -hmm. if one, once we start getting into like spells and miracles and stuff, and that pops up, I'll probably mention this one as yeah. a way that you can take a previously already done something, you know, whether it's a perk or a miracle or psychic ability, and manipulate it to change it to make it something different without having to completely right. create it, reskin it. Because I want to say um, that's where like the willpower charisma. Um, thing. There was another one that was like willpower mind or something like that. Yeah. That was a, a weapon that you could make. Was that it? Anyway, we'll figure it out later. Well, yes. <laughs> Some, <laughs> something to look forward to. But yeah, so this is very powerful. If you can arrange it into your list somehow uh, and get your GM to agree. I might, because this is a very specific archetype. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we really discussed uh, archetypes in general because i was talking to one of my i was talking to one of my players about this earlier uh because a lot of backer archetypes especially in isle and maybe pan pacifica are pretty good <laughs> right um some maybe really good um so a lot of the time what sort of balances them is being in the archetype like this exact archetype it's not mm -hmm. like crunched to the max so it makes sense and it's flavorful but if you just allow someone to take the perk on a character that they have totally crunched to do this one thing and one thing only and they're barely a character anymore it kind of might end up breaking things mm -hmm. so the way i look at things like this is i usually will tell if a player expresses interest in wanting to play with this backer archetype you have to play the backer archetype uh -huh. like you have not just take the perk you have to play as start at least start as front, this yeah. archetype what it says uh but then again with this psychic knife being a psionic ability and not a perk per se i could even see coming up with like a path that led into this mm -hmm. you know something like a psych uh, telepathic warrior path sort of thing or assassin there's all kinds of things you could do and this would be a nice way just to start into it sometimes you can use these archetypes and uh, perks just to you know, get the creativity going right no i i completely agree with that in any game master if you're looking at the the perk and you're seeing other ways that a player could stack stuff together and you just think it's way out there look at the archetype the archetype seems fine as it is then do as jay you know you kind of restrict it a little bit it can only be this archetype um it, that even kind of goes back to classic uh torb with the the werewolf template they called them templates back then is it was a whole mm -hmm. different way um, that you would do your ads at the end of your uh, it was very complicated <laughs> yes yes it was but it was like <laughs> you didn't just get to do that kind of thing with any of the templates you had to use mm -hmm. the werewolf one um so if if you need to restrict it that way to allow it then um i would say go ahead on that um this one i want to say was you know e each one of these is inspired by different things and this one the psychic knife was i can't remember it there was another power or some similar mystical effect that had a a similar thing but not with telepathy and it's kind of i won't say it was a direct reskin but it was kind of inspired by that which i've done in official things where i've looked at um kind of i see see a hole that needs to be filled and say a i need a miracle that does this thing well there is a spell that's what i want but i don't want it to just be a carbon copy of the spell you don't want it to be exact yeah right so it might be something as changing a stymie you know this does a stymie now this other way in a different you know the spell this does a vulnerable. stymie this does a vulnerable right you know <laughs> that type of thing yeah. so manipulating abilities like that is go go for it as a game master if you have if you're a player and you would like something like that get with your game master be upfront and honest 
Um, because if you sneak something past your game, you know, I'm doing air quotes, sneak something past your <laughs> game master, they will realize it and then be less likely to allow it or, you know, your suggestion in the future. And that's not what you want. You want to have a, especially with Tor Eternity, you really want to have a cooperative game where everybody is enjoying it and one person isn't just taking everything and min right. you know. Unless that's your thing, unless you are like, hey, let's have fun with an adversarial type <laughs> game yeah. master and players. If if that's your goal and everybody agrees, I'm not going to say don't do it. But in the general concept of how design and that works as official for Tory Eternity, that's what we're we're looking for. Clear c communication. That's why we have all the transparency rules. <laughs> um. So, any any other thoughts for any of oh, yeah. the uh, backer archetypes for Pan Pacific? I was like, oh, that's the last one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shout out to whoever did the Sai Rikishi for uh -huh. not needing a special perk. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I know think a most lot of people... Pe oh, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, most people, I think, take this just so they can get a perk in. But uh, it's always refreshing to see ones that are just a character. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, are... <clears throat> when I say a lot of people, it's because there's people that are vocal and people that just... It's true, they, yeah. <laughs> they don't care, so they don't type, you know, things into forums or Discord or anything like that. But the, I, I saw people saying, oh, I'm disappointed that this one didn't have a perk. But sometimes you just want to show a really cool concept of something that yeah. you have. So we have a street sumo, basically, you know, street sumo wrestler, uh, which is the Sai Rikishi, uh, who, who just went through a way that you might not think. Uh, we have a few you know, minutes left. Um, so what this backer did is they took the disciplined psychic. So they're a sumo wrestler, a big wrestler physical person, and they yeah. chose the uh, disciplined psychic. Um, and they got biodensity, energize, and data kinesis. You know, as so, and the biodensity is really good for when you want to do physical things. And then they took a path, the path of uh, unifi unification, to show that's how their sumo wrestler type uh, thing uh, manifested itself. Yeah, you know, picture yeah, with, that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, they chose a telekinetic strike, <laughs> wall running. Um, oh, with the biokinesis uh, things that they get, pain, painful touch, avoid, and deflect are the, the different steps as you go down. So, yeah, having this big sumo, street sumo wrestler do a wall running and have some bio density, it just shows how you can take the base things in the game and come up with a completely unique and interesting yeah. character. Not everything needs a crazy perk. <laughs> but speaking of crazy perk, I did realize afterwards uh, <clears throat> that the 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 mermaid one uh, yes. also gave the gills as well. So oh, gave yes. even more. So it was even better than I was saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that was a yeah. We want you to be able to <laughs> not drown and <laughs> do the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um... Yeah, that so that will sum up the Pan Pacifica perks. Is I uh, guess, or go well, ahead. I guess one last one last thing I should ask you on behalf mm -hmm. of the community because I have seen this question being asked a lot, mm -hmm. and it'd be good to have an official answer if you can give an official answer. Is are these the end of the backer archetypes? I believe so. Right, I believe so. So, so officially. That's it. <laughs> yes, yes. I know a lot of people will be uh, probably disappointed in that, um, but these were the, the standard cosms, the standard realities, and maybe, you know, I, I won't even come close to making a promise, so I'll just say yeah, no. Don't do it. Because, because <laughs> if, I say, if I say anything other than no, and then it becomes no... That will be bad. If I say no and right. then it becomes a yes, <laughs> then that's better. <laughs> so, uh, but no, that's the, public relations right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, I, I do want to thank all the backers. Um, I stated this last time, but I'll state it at the end also. The reason I specif specifically did the, the backer archetypes 
for Pan Pacifica was because we've been using, or I've been using the Torg Codex when we do our lists of the, the groups, the perk groups and categories, but the backer ones hadn't been added to those yet. So I was missing them and I don't want them missed. So the other ones will go through it and we'll tell you which uh, backer, you know, that came from this digital set with this co Cosm, which is the, the backer archetype um, where you can get them off a drive through RPG. But these were getting left out because they aren't on that list yet. So I wanted to make sure um, that they got their due vigilance in us uh, breaking them down. So now they've been broken down <laughs> in various ways. Hey. Right. Uh, so I guess uh, we'll go ahead and end that for this episode. Uh, we do thank you for either listening or viewing, depending on where you get uh, your Delphi Council debriefings. But do give us a uh, email at torgdcd at gmail dot com, and we will again we'll read your questions. We'll answer any. Uh, We'll read your email. We will answer questions, comment on comments, etc. Um, and it's a, a nice way to get in touch with you, the supporters and fans of Torg Eternity. So, having said th that, um, we'll say goodbye for today. And until then, we hope you have fun in your own cosm. Bye. Night. Or bye. Hello, this is Lehman after the recording. So I was thinking about the virtual follower a little bit and how in the discussion um, I did say something at the beginning of it um, that it could be used for interaction attacks. And it was because I just read interaction attacks, but that meant that it could be affected by interaction attacks. Um, so the virtual follower can't do anything mechanical in combat to affect a threat and that basically is no damage nothing that would do modifiers um, directly against an opponent but with the ability for combined actions extra effort as a game master you could allow those situations so that's what i would allow and say those delphi uh requisitions that the character asks for i definitely would not allow the virtual follower to do the requisition the virtual follower like other followers are not members of the delphi council they are not storm knights but as jay said you might have that thing in your head well it's going to talk in a different voice and i wouldn't as soon as a, a player gets into the needing to justify an action of the oh it could do a voice modulator blah 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 um i would really just nix it at that point but i would allow the combined action it is telling the storm knight maybe what to say but then the storm knight and based off of their charisma and their own persuasion and or streetwise if they're out in the streets trying to buy something that then it it's their role with multi-action uh penalty it's their role that is determining it so maybe the virtual assistant tells them one thing and they flub it up when they're talking if they roll bad or if they roll good they take what the virtual assistant said and they just add um, a little bit of pizzazz to it it makes it a little more understandable so i just wanted to have that clarification on that perk um, the perk is not meant to be a separate individual that can do all the things of the storm knights that's one of the intentions of that perk um, was to cut down to allow a follower in some way but to cut down on the problems that some people have with followers and companions and the, the whether it's a beast or a, a person. So I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. Um, and that's basically it. So I decided to tack this on. So thank you very much.